Step one is simply to listen to this reminder. Thoughts will pop into your head and make noise there. And that's the brain offering up ideas, opinions, judgments, narratives and memories in response to your world. Your brain is like an inner critic who is on high alert all the time, giving you accurate and not so accurate information. But you don't have to identify with the noise it makes. As a child, the inputting you received was meant to ensure you can operate healthily as an adult. But many people, perhaps even most, aren't operating in the same world they grew up in and have internalized some less than helpful mechanisms. So it's time for an update. But the good news is, the fact that this ability exists means that it's something that our evolution has accounted for. So we can rest assured that, while truly inconvenient, we really can handle the task. Life happens in cycles. Your brain will offer you something new. Needing or wanting to really rest an equal amount of time as you spend being productive is normal and healthy. Today, you don't need to get your life together. If you feel like doing nothing, it's okay to do nothing. Remove all pressure to be and do anything but exist. Sometimes that's all we need to hear. If you feel energized to do something more, the rest of this routine is for you. Some of the steps in this routine will be more challenging than others. Listen to your body and trust you know what you need. Usually at the beginning, when I'm on the brink, I find myself in bed. Sometimes getting out of bed feels hard, so I start off by staying exactly where I am. The next task I start with is maybe a controversial one, because it involves talking to our inner child. I think the most common aversion to this is simply the language. Inner child is synonymous with the part of you that hasn't developed the skills needed to navigate life in a healthy way. Those of us who suffer from depression and anxiety have an inner child that needs care, understanding and nurturing by our inner adult, which is the part of us that isn't the inner child, the part that is trying to manage, the part that clicked on this video. The only way to help them is to teach them. And one of the most effective ways of doing this is simply to talk to that part of you. This will slowly give your inner child proof that there's an adult around that can be trusted that is noticing and that is taking care of you. I like to gently tell them, I'm aware of what you're feeling. Those feelings make sense. And I, the adult, am going to completely take over so that you can rest. It's important then to think about what a safe parent would do to help this child and then to do that for yourself. The goal is to build trust with yourself that will allow the parts of you that are stuck, your inner child, to heal. If you aren't sure what to do, the rest of this routine will help. The next step is to avoid consuming any content today. All of our socials are designed to be unpredictable so that the algorithm can check what content captures your attention, regardless of whether it makes you feel good about yourself or not. I personally find myself in cycles that start with seeing something triggering but that captured my attention and then scrolling to the next post, hoping it'll distract me and make me feel something positive to make up for it. But it's always an emotional gamble. We're opening ourselves up to being exposed to things that negatively impact us. When we're already not feeling emotionally stable, it's a self-sabotaging space to enter. Today, let's avoid it. It's really common in this highly systemized world to feel that real change is behind something extremely complex, often, We simply need to live more like a human should. Doing something physical is a manual way to make your body add better feeling hormones into the mix. The next thing I do is move from one warm space to another. That is, to hop out of bed and hop in the shower. At the end of your shower, if you're feeling really energized to try something drastic, doing a 30 second cold rinse can be extremely effective. Slowly turn down the hot water while increasing the cold, until it's entirely cold. The only thing about this method is that you have to commit to the challenge. Dreading the cold and enduring it won't have the same effect as hyping yourself up and committing. Something magical happens when you approach it this way. 
After submerging your body under the water and taking big deep breaths, your body creates a dulling barrier all over your skin to help you handle the cold. And when it's time to get out, the temperature of the atmosphere is much warmer than your body and it truly feels like the world has temporarily made itself cozy just for you. Step five is to get dressed into something comfortable that makes you feel you could go out into the world if you decided you wanted to. Exercise gear like bike shorts or yoga pants and a t-shirt is great for this. Even if you don't leave the house, you'll feel like you're in the day rather than stretching out the morning. The next task is to step into the morning sunlight. Our bodies are designed to increase production of serotonin and decrease our levels of melatonin upon exposure to sunlight, which is another manual way of making our bodies add enjoyable hormones to the mix. Many people live in locations that are low in sunlight year round or at specific times of the year. And if this is the case, I've found the next best thing to be to purchase a UV light that's designed to help plants grow. Sit in front of the UV lamp with your eyes closed and imagine soaking up the sun. If you're in the sun or using a UV light, I always put on SPF for peace of mind. If you don't have access to a UV light, a lamp or light of any kind, including the torch feature on your phone, can be an effective alternative. Next is to co-regulate your emotions. The fastest way to do this is to spend some time with a safe and healthy person, face to face. Some of us don't have safe people, and if this is the case, sitting with a pet is extremely effective. Pets are almost always experiencing positive emotions, and simply observing and interacting with a furry friend can genuinely regulate your physical and emotional state. For those of us who don't have access to either a safe person or a furry friend, utilizing free mental health hotlines allows you to talk to someone empathetic and caring about your thoughts and feelings, and I'll link some below. During this co-regulation stage, if you can afford it, it's also a good time to make plans to start seeing a therapist or to book an appointment with your therapist if you already have one. Therapy sessions are co-regulation sessions in many instances. If co-regulation isn't a viable option for you, self-regulation can help prevent you from spiraling past the brink. Music, podcasts, and channeling your creative side are all perfect for this. If you're listening to music or podcasts, choose content that is genuinely uplifting and avoid content that is moody or emotional. We're not listening to music or podcasts we just like. We're listening for the sole purpose of regulating our emotions and bringing us into a state of positivity. So make sure you're selective. I'll link some in the description box if you're not sure what would work for you. Creating something to channel your feelings and thoughts is also a perfect self-regulating technique. Try painting or drawing your emotions, writing about them or sculpting them. Creating to channel emotions, even if the emotion is a feeling of emptiness, is a tangible way of processing them and can help with both enduring the lifespan of the emotion as well as helping to clear it out. And this leads me to the next step. Step eight is one that for me often has the biggest impact. We're going to purge our fears and resentments. Using pencil and paper is best, but if you don't have some nearby, it's okay to use anything you have including your notes app on your phone. This is an exercise I learned from the crappy childhood fairy, and I'll link her below. It's not the same as journaling out your thoughts and feelings. It's a process of writing without filter or concern for consequences, the fears and resentments that are sitting at the surface of your mind right now. And then we announce that we're now ready to release them and we destroy every page. Destroying the paper creates a tangible act of releasing it, and it's an important part of knowing that you really can be honest, because no one is ever going to read it. Though it sounds too simple to have any effect at all, the catharsis of bearing yourself wholly and truly to the paper, and then releasing it and destroying it, is surprisingly powerful. Often, the majority of our thoughts and feelings we have about people, circumstances, situations, aren't really true and are really just thoughts and ideas our brain has offered up to our detriment. Even if some thoughts and feelings are true, which I'm certain some will be, taking all of the garble 
and mentally and physically throwing it away will make all the noise disperse and all the important stuff rise to the top. You'll find that there isn't so much to feel or to think about after all. Only a few select things that, for a day other than today, might actually be quite manageable. In the interest of keeping this video short, I've put in the description of this video an explanation on how to do this exercise exactly as it's meant to be done to get the full benefit. After you've released them, rest. Simply sit or lay quietly and feel how it is to exist without them. Spend some time here, about 10 to 20 minutes, quietly sitting, eyes closed, breathing and repeating a neutral word like this in your mind. Notice how much lighter you feel, whether it be a lot or a little. The next step is to come up with a healthy accomplishment to complete that feels like a challenge but that you know you can achieve. The challenge I normally reach for is to drink a full two litres of water before 6pm tonight. Set yourself up to succeed at the challenge that you choose. If I'm trying to drink two litres of water, I'll break it into cups. Since I know that two litres of water is equal to eight cups, I can put a glass nearby and ensure that every time I see the bottle of water, I fill up the glass and then drink it. If your challenge is something like going to the gym or going for a walk, remember that to get momentum, you can break it down into tiny goals, like pick up the car keys, walk to the car, turn the car on, make this right turn, until eventually you're at the gym and completing the challenge. No matter your challenge, big or small, effort is still effort, and any challenge you complete is a genuine win. A quote I love is, Self-esteem is the reputation you build with yourself. And completing a challenge will give you a sense of achievement as well as data that you can add to the reputation you're building with yourself. If your challenge was to get out of bed this morning and you did it, that is a genuine win. Caroline Winkler made an amazing video on how to refresh your space if you're feeling low in energy, and her tips are gold. When I'm feeling energized enough to make a big effort to get me off the brink, changing my home environment is the perfect way to create a tangible emotional shift. Caroline says in her video that when you're moving and interacting with your space, there's some emotional processing going on, especially in homes that are entrenched in memory and emotional association. And I found this to be deeply true. If you're looking for interior design ideas, I'll link Caroline's video below, but for our purposes, the most approachable activity is to rearrange the items on one surface in your house, or if you're feeling extra energized, change the furniture around in your bedroom or lounge room. Changing the flow of a room introduces an entirely new energy to the space, which is helpful in recalibrating our own energy. The pressures and expectations of the capitalist environment we find ourselves in can make us feel that basic human needs like connection, lack of pressure, sleep, nutrition, movement are all things that are nice to haves rather than essentials. And trying to meet expectations by not prioritizing these things can make us feel as if we're flawed or broken for needing them. But actually, we're living in an environment that isn't designed with the well being of humans in mind. You're allowed to claim these needs and prioritize them anyway. I realize some of you who are watching may be past the brink and really struggling right now. Often, people tell us that we are at fault for feeling this way, making us feel that we need to change, be something different, do something different, or unlock some sort of secret that will change everything. But there's nothing you need to do right now, and you're not at fault for feeling the way that you do. Sometimes, you just need rest and time. When you feel like you can't go on, sometimes you don't need to go anywhere. Sometimes you just need to wait. And being in this moment right now is beyond difficult. But you're surviving it right now. And you're moving through it right now. It doesn't feel like it, but you are. What's coming next is unknown and full of possibility. Get ready to listen to the good feeling your brain offers you up soon. Until then, 
I see you.